Okay, in this problem, we're asked to use Lagrange multipliers to find the global max and min of our function f on a compact region defined by our constraint. And so we have f is given as f of x, y equals x minus y. And our constraint equation is 3x squared plus 2y squared is less than or equal to 30. And we just kind of have given a quick sketch of our compact region E defined by our constraint. It's just uh, an ellipse. And so we want to use Lagrange multipliers to find our global max and min of F on this region. So first we want to see if there are any critical points of F that lie within the interior of our uh, compact region E. So we'll do that in the normal way by just finding the critical points of F and seeing if any of them lie in our region. So we have our gradient vector of f, and we want that to be equal to zero. But our gradient vector of f is um, one negative one, which is never zero. So we know there are no interior, but, uh, interior critical points um, of f on the interior of e. So we'll use Lagrange multipliers now to check the boundary. The boundary occurs um, when 3x squared plus 2y squared is equal to 30 rather than less than or equal. And we want to use Lagrange multipliers to find um, points that satisfy this constraint and also where the gradient of f is equal to some constant lambda times the gradient of g, where, the, where g is just 3x squared plus 2y squared. And so then our constraint is just a level set of our function g. Okay, so we're looking for this. So we want, so we'll go ahead and plug in what our gradient of f is. So our gradient of f is 1, negative 1, which we calculated earlier. And we want to set that equal to lambda times the gradient of g. So we can calculate that, which is 6x comma 4y. And then we also want to satisfy our constraint. So now we have three functions with three unknowns, and we can get our three functions by looking at the components and setting them equal to each other. So we have so our first uh, function is our, con our constraint, and then our second is 1 is equal to 6 lambda x by setting the x components equal to each other. And then the second, or the third equation is negative 1 equals 4 lambda y. And we get that by setting the y component of our equation equal to each other. Okay, so we can go ahead and just straight away, we'll look at um, the case where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. Or so if x is equal to 0, then um, we have our constraint is 2y squared is equal to 30. And then Or rather, let's um, let's check if lambda is equal to zero. Then, if lambda is equal to zero, we see that we have an inequality 
just from this equation, we have 0 is equal to 1. And so we know that lambda cannot be equal to 0. So we know that lambda is not equal to 0. So then we can go ahead and divide both sides of this equation um, by lambda, or 6 lambda, and then both sides of this equation by 4 lambda. And so we get that x is equal to 1 over 6 lambda, and y is equal to negative 1 over 4 lambda. OK, so now we can use the these two equations to plug into our first constraint, our original constraint, and determine what value of lambda satisfies this. So So we have 3 times uh, 1 over 36 lambda squared plus 2 over 16 lambda squared equals 30. We can see that we have a lambda squared in the denominator of bo both of these two terms. So we'll multiply both sides by lambda squared. And we'll get Three over thirty-six plus two over sixteen is equal to thirty lambda squared. Okay, so we can find a common denominator and begin to solve this. So we we get if we let our common denominator be one forty-four. We get on the left-hand side. 30 over 144 is equal to 30 lambda squared. And now we can just solve lambda. We see that lambda squared is 1 over 144. And lambda is equal to plus or minus 1 twelfth. OK, so um, now we can use these two points, a lambda equals plus 1 twelfth and lambda equals minus 1 twelfth, to get x and y coordinates. Um, and we know that that will solve our constraint. So we have two points that we need to check. So first, when we plug in for lambda equals 1 twelfth, we see that x is 1 over 1 half, which is 2. And when we plug in for y, we get 1 over, or negative 1 over 1 third, or negative 3. So we have one point when lambda is equal to 1 twelfth x is equal to 3, or 2, and y is equal to negative 3. And now, similarly, if we plug in lambda equals negative 1 twelfth, we'll just get the negation. So we have our points are two, three, 2, negative 3, and negative 2, 3. OK, so these are our two critical points, and we knew that there are no critical points on the interior of our compact region E. So both of these points are on the boundary, and there are only critical points. So we're going to hope that if everything worked out all right, we have one max and one min. So
So at our, at our critical point, x equals 2, y equals negative 3, we have f attains a value of 5. And at our point, x equals negative 2, y equals positive 3, we get that f is equal to negative 5. So we can go ahead and kind of, S, we can kind of show what these look like. So we, so we see that F is going to be just a line. And when we hit our critical points, um, we're just kind of glancing off it. And as we, as we would change, we would get points along the interior, but these would all be somewhere in between. So we have f equals 5 is the level curve of f along this line, and f equals negative 5 is the level set along that point. So we have um, or rather when x is equal to 2 or x is, yeah 2 negative 3 so this is f equals 5 and this is f equals negative 5 and they just kind of glance off our compact region E. So we have our global max and our global min, and they're just the negation of each other. 